Have you ever seen or heard of biblical icons where Jesus or the Virgin Mary have dark skin? Or even Abraham or King David? Then look beyond Europe. Russia has opened its vaults to reveal biblical icons featuring darker-skinned figures. In case this is making you wonder if Russia has its own twist on biblical figures. The answer is a no. This is not the case at all. This is, a matter of fact, as real as the untouched horizon of time. These icons aren't just artistic anomalies. These hold deep meanings of hidden shaded truths, sparking serious curious questions about history and faith, representation and the unexpected corners of religious art. Pay close attention, amazing people. You are just about to hear it today, like it is, in this video. Before we continue, kindly endeavor to hit that like button as a way of supporting our works. Share with your families and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative and subscribe to stay put for more while you help in building the rising membership of this channel. We appreciate your support. First and foremost, let's start with the person of the most popular name in the world today. Jesus. Mark chapter 4 verse 22. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be manifested, neither anything kept secret that would not be brought to light. For centuries the most common image of Jesus Christ, at least in Western cultures, has been that of a bearded, fair-skinned man with long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair and often blue eyes. But the Bible doesn't describe Jesus physically, and all the evidence we do have today indicates that he probably looked very well different from how he has long been portrayed. The Good Book offers few clues about Christ's physical appearance. Most of what we know about Jesus comes from the first four books of the New Testament, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. According to the Gospels, Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in the town of Nazareth in Galilee, formerly Palestine, now northern Israel, during the first century. We know that Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. So tells us the Bible book of Luke chapter 3 verses 23. But the Bible tells us virtually nothing about what he looked like, except that he didn't stand out in any particular way. The historical Jesus likely had the brown eyes and skin of other first century Jews from Galilee a region in Biblical Israel. But no one knows exactly what Jesus looked like. There are no known images of Jesus from his lifetime, and while the Old Testament kings Saul and David are explicitly called tall and handsome in the Bible, there is little indication of Jesus' appearance in the Old or New Testaments. In addition, when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion, Judas Iscariot had to point Jesus out to his soldiers among the disciples, presumably because they all appeared similar to one another but the words of the Bible in itself did not hint on the reasons behind their similarities. Whether they were white or black, or why or how they looked too similar, it did not tell. Considering these events, one is made to actually wonder, were these words deliberately expunged from the Bible to hide certain glaring truths, or did the writers of the good book of the Gospel fail to discuss these things? However, the portrayal of Jesus as a white European man has come under renewed scrutiny during this period of introspection over the legacy of racism in society, and over the actuality of truth. One of the major factors of this renewed scrutiny happens to come with the buzzing news concerning certain storming revelations from Russia. For some time now, the recentness of this event has got everyone talking in wonderment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. This arises a debate around Putin's growing reliance on the church. Emphasizing on the importance of the holy icon, Putin ordered Andrei Rublev's trinity be transferred to the Russian Orthodox Church from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery for a year. The relocation of Russia's most well-known icon highlights how closely the war has intertwined politics and religion. The icon depicts the Oak of Mamre, where the three angels visited Abraham in the book of Genesis. Did you notice anything about these icons on display? They are all black. Icons dating back to the 14th century brought together from private collections across Russia. Rare and strongly challenging masterpieces, most of which were destroyed during the Soviet era. It's very beautiful. It gives you goose pimples. It's a remarkable exhibition. It's an exhibition which feeds the senses. Everything is so grey outside at the moment, and here suddenly it's a feast for the eyes. These icons that you see are the survivors of what is left. Had the museums not saved them, they wouldn't be existing today. There used to be millions of these icons, but now only 50,000 of them are within sight. The unveiling of these icons is a powerful testament to the enduring strength of truth. 
The authenticity of these paintings compels us to re-evaluate our understanding of the past, particularly regarding the presence and representation of black figures. For centuries, these figures may have been shrouded in obscurity, but their rediscovery sheds light on previously untold stories, standing as a challenge to long-held assumptions, prompting us to rewrite history with a more inclusive lens. Many Russian icons were destroyed or sold abroad by agents of the Soviet government. Some were hidden to avoid destruction or were smuggled out of the country. Since the fall of communism, numbers of icon painting studios have again opened and are painting in a variety of styles for the local and international market. Many older, hidden icons have also been retrieved from hiding or brought back from overseas. The Castile San Angelo in Rome is currently hosting an exhibition of 40 Russian icons that have left their country for the first time. They are pieces of art that were hidden after the October Revolution of 1917 in order to protect them from anti-religious destruction. It's the first time that a large number of Russian icons have come here to Italy. In addition, here are a dozen examples that have never before been moved. They appear for the first time in our catalog. Icons are usually painted on wood and meant to represent saints or sacred elements. The Orthodox tradition considers them as if they were the gospel, inspirations of God through the hand of the artist. Their deep symbolism is reflected from the meaning of icon as a representation or vision from another world. The wood evokes the Holy Cross through its gold background, divine light, and the cloth attached to the wood evokes the cloth that covered the body of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, they have a great importance and a fundamental recognition in Russia because the icons represent for Russia what the pyramids represent for Egypt or the temples to the Greeks. The exhibition shows icons ranging from the 15th century until the early 20th century. It's a rare opportunity to see the religious soul of Russia through its... There's been so much debate going on around the world of late, bestirred by the unveiling of these black biblical icons. Some tend to think that the icons had blackened over time due to age, while others say that the blackness of the icons has nothing to do with age but are a measure of accuracy meant to depict the actual color of the skins of the people painted. Because they were black people, says Robert Rubin. Why didn't their clothes change to black in those paintings or all of the paintings? The true Israelis were black-skinned people, not white. Likewise, the ancient Egyptians. The Reshet structure in Mauritania is also the location of Atlantis. Russians did not change their paintings just as other countries did. They simply kept the true paintings and iconography. Look up ancient maps and you will see that the Kingdom of Judah was later located in West Africa. The Jewish nation was destroyed by Titus. Millions of Jews fled into Africa. They ended up in the west of Africa. From there, they were sold as slave to almost every part of the world. Do you think the hatred for black people is just normal or a coincidence? No, it was because they, Israelis, did not keep the commandments of God. Moses informed them of the blessings and curses as we can see in the Bible book of Deuteronomy. God told them they will lose that land to people whom they did not know if they disobey him. The hatred for the black children of Ham and Shem is because the children of Shem have mixed up with the children of Ham. They are both black-skinned. The prime target of this hate is actually the children of Shem. Shem is being punished for his disobedience to his God. Another insightful one from Johnson here says, because black people were the people in the Bible that the Americans turned white when they told the stories to us. But Russians didn't get the memo, they went off for real history. Songs of Solomon. Chapter 1 verse 5. Revelations chapter 1 verse 15, go check it out. It's in the text, it's not because of a candle or anything else these people are talking about. In that case, the whole picture would be black, not just the face and the hands. They are meant to be black because they were black people. This great USA is also a great deceiver, and so many people inherit the wrong lesson from their great-grandparents and their parents to the point where it's so deep that the lie is made true when the real answer is really just right there. But you never look because why would you? The Russian unveilings didn't stop there. Russia continues with its biblical historical revelations with President Putin at the foremost front, championing the course. Russia has opened its cellars to reveal remarkable paintings of Jesus dating back to the 1400s. By Father Vladimir Ivanov. This is a book that is highly coveted by the different circles it, because it has the black icons. It has the um, history of black people in places like Russia, 
in um, Italy in places all over Europe this book can range from thirteen hundred to three thousand dollars so it's not an easy book to get I actually borrowed this book from a friend you know but this book has a lot of um, interesting depictions in it a lot of them pertaining to the to the Bible like right here this is the transfiguration of Christ and you see it's it's black people in caves I believe what it looks like it's black people in the whole picture but this is um, knowledge that escapes black people here in America um, it's definitely something that we would never see or never hear about in the educational system now I'm pretty sure there's people that are um, black history um, college students majoring in black history or world history and they've never seen nothing like this before at least not from the standpoint of Europe you know this is the crucifixion of Christ and in it we see um, angels black angels um, the people surrounding him are black It's very interesting because the images that we see are contrary to what we have known our whole lives or what we have been taught our whole lives. Like I, I'll say it again, like these type of images of antiquity escape black people here in America and I can say all people for in general just people in general don't know I'm pretty sure there's plenty of Caucasian people and people of all nationalities that don't know the extent that black people covered the earth and in many cases like here like what you see uh, we're in rulership positions like this looks like a a king. The images of Jesus and other historical figures in Russia's black icons challenge the commonly known perception of antiquity and reveal the extent of black people's presence and influence throughout history. Paintings from the 1500s and 1600s depicting black icons, including Jesus and Mary, in a highly sought-after book that explores the history of black people in Russia, Italy, and other parts of Europe. The book contains interesting depictions of black people in biblical scenes which is knowledge that is not taught in the American educational system. However, debates concerning the authenticity of these icons goes on. And Alex Pismeni, a software developer and Catholic Christian, has some things to contribute. The Russian Christians adopted Byzantine orthodoxy wholesale. That of course includes the iconography. The fundamental principle of orthodox iconography is no changes. The icons are, as much as possible, portraits of Christ, Our Lady, and other saints. Further, the styling, mood, garments, gestures are all fixed in the Byzantine style, so much so that students of iconography refer to these rules as iconographical canon. Even though very little of that canon ever went through the normal ecclesial legislative process involving episcopacy and councils. Going forward, while Russia continues to amaze the world in this light, the unquenchable fire of truth persists through the darkness of history. Not so long, protesters had called for the removal of Confederate statues in the U.S. Activist Sean King went further, suggesting that murals and artwork depicting white Jesus should come down. His concerns about the depiction of Christ and how it is used to uphold notions of white supremacy are not isolated. Prominent scholars and the Archbishop of Canterbury have called to reconsider Jesus' portrayal as a white man. Only recently, on June 22, 2020, Writer and activist Sean King announced that he supports the destruction of statues that depict a white Jesus. King, who had tweeted his remarks on that memorable Monday of 2022 June, noted that historians believe Jesus likely had the appearance of people who typically lived in the Middle East during his time, rather than the white man who is often depicted in Christian iconography. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down, 
King tweeted. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark, he added. Tear them down. The comments quickly drew condemnation from some on the platform, including several prominent conservative figures. King clarified that he was only advocating that statues of a white Jesus be torn down in response to a tweet from the account of PragerU, a non-profit co-founded by conservative talk show host Dennis Prager. He also remarked that stained glass windows and other images of a white Jesus, his white mother and their white friends should all be destroyed, insisting they are racist propaganda and a gross form of white supremacy. King shared an image of a darker-skinned Jesus that appeared in a 2002 Popular Mechanics article, which scholars believe may be more accurate than those showing Jesus as a European. He commented that the image would have been intolerable for white Americans who participated in slavery. Experts have long since said that this is likely the most accurate depiction of Jesus. White Americans who bought, sold, traded, raped and worked Africans to death for hundreds of years in this country simply could not have this man at the center of their faith. Sean King further tweets, June 23, 2020, a day after he had tweeted his support for the destruction of all white statued Jesus. A tweet by Jenna Ellis, a lawyer representing President Donald Trump, warned that she would not break if they try to cancel Christianity, although it's unclear if it was in direct response to King's tweet. Regardless, King responded that what the lawyer was actually defending here is her whiteness. Christian whiteness needs white Jesus, King tweeted to Ellis. It's not about generosity or kindness. It's not about protecting the vulnerable. It's about whiteness itself. Attack white Jesus to her, and you attack her faith. Statues have been torn down and destroyed amid ongoing protests against racial injustice and police brutality that have swept the nation these recent years counting from 2020. Although statues and monuments paying tribute to the Confederacy have been primarily targeted, statues of other figures from early American history have also been taken down. The movement to take down and deface controversial statues has gained traction in the UK, as well as Europe and the US, but has divided public opinion, with critics slamming it as mob rule, while others applaud it as a way of addressing systemic racism. Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury and head of the Church of England, has said the Church should reconsider its portrayal of Jesus as a white man. Speaking to the BBC Today programme, Welby was asked whether the way the Western Church portrays Jesus needed to be thought about again and reimagined. Yes, of course it does, he said, adding that Jesus was portrayed differently in countries around the world. He was regularly in touch with Anglican church leaders from around the world, he said, who did not portray Jesus as white. You go into their churches and you don't see a white Jesus, you see a black Jesus or Chinese Jesus or a Middle Eastern Jesus, which is of course the most accurate. Welby added that the representations of Jesus were not, however, who we worship, but rather served as a reminder of the universality of God who became fully human. Addressing calls for monuments with links to the UK's imperialist history and slave trade to be removed, he said statues in Canterbury Cathedral would be put under review. The question about whether they should all be there arises, of course it does, and we've seen that all over the world, he continued. We're going to be looking very carefully and putting them in context and seeing if they all should be there, says Justin Welby. In closing, the unveiling of these black icons serves as a powerful reminder that history is often shrouded in darkness, but truth has a way of shining through. These artifacts compel us to re-examine our understanding of the past and challenge long-held narratives. If their authenticity is confirmed, the paintings offer a glimpse into a previously unknown facet of history, forcing us to confront the complexities of representation. This discovery stands as a testament to the enduring power of truth, shattering the towers of misinformation and prompting a re-evaluation of the stories we tell ourselves about the past. That brings us to the end of yet another video segment. Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below, we are always happy to pick from them. Support our works by always hitting that like button in front of you. Share with your friends and families to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative, and kindly subscribe to get notification for more interesting videos in the way. We are glad to have you. Thank you for watching.